Hey guys, welcome back. This is Palioxis here and today I just wanted to go over some basic Photoshop skills. So to begin, I just want to say that there's about five different like sub categories of Photoshop skills that you need to know in order to understand what you're doing. So to begin, um, the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to get over in Photoshop and um, so to begin, we'll just go up to file. Um, you can either open your uh, project from before or open as. You can look it up, see if you have any Photoshop things. Um, but for now, we're not going to worry about any of this other stuff. So like export, any of that crap. We don't really need it. But anyways, so we're going to start and we're going to just select a new um canvas and so there's a lot of settings that you can do here you might get a little confused you're, you're wondering why big numbers why resolution what the hell is that don't worry about it um i'll explain it to you so if you actually go back to your desktop and you right click and you go down to screen resolution you see all this stuff and you can actually see the resolution of what your screen is right now so it's interesting because when you look at what's in Photoshop, you'll see that this is your resolution and it ties into this 1920 by 1080, 1920 by 1080. So basically what that's saying is um, we're going to make the canvas size. So whatever photo we're going to put in here and edit, it's going to be the same resolution as your screen. However, that's when this comes in handy and um, it actually makes your image more clear. So this is saying that your image will be this big and it'll show up to look this big, but this is what makes it clear and visible. So as a general rule, I do about 300 for the resolution and I keep 1920 by 1080 if you're just doing something else. Some things will be specific. So if you're looking up uh, a YouTube um, banner template. So let's say you want to create a YouTube banner and you want it uh, a certain way. So there's actually uh, the pixel size is 2560 by 1440. So essentially what that means is um, that's how big the, the photo has to be in order to, for it to look good on YouTube. Because if you look on YouTube, there'll be different browsers. So th there'll be your mobile, there'll be uh, YouTube for Windows or for Mac or whatever you have. And uh, there's also the TV. So it has to be all those same sizes. So that's why it's so big. But we're not going to be talking much about that anyways today. Um, we're just going to be focusing on Photoshop. So it doesn't really matter what size you choose for your pan uh, canvas. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. It's traditional for me. Anyways, uh, you press OK. And then you'll pop up with this white area. So you may ask yourself, what is this white area? Well, this white area is actually where all of everything happens in Photoshop, pretty much. So um, to go over basic controls, you can actually move stuff. Well, you can't now, but you can move stuff with this tool. This tool is used for selecting stuff. Um, this is for also selecting stuff more specifically. And you can also click and hold these things and it'll give you different uh, different tools. But pretty much all the tools have simple things that they do. Uh, this one will select a certain area um, of like color or um, space. This will crop your image, perspective to slice. This will just seek out a color. So let's say I just picked gray. And now I can color this the same color, whatever. Um, this is your brush tool. You can also do pencil. The difference between this is because it is it uh, makes it more like fluid and clear. Uh, however, your pencil tool is very pixely. 
it's good for Minecraft if you do stuff like that. Um, stickers, I think. Uh, no, stamp tool. Um, your eraser, which also can be magic erase, all that stuff. It, it gets very into detail, so you don't really need to worry about what's after, like what other tools there are. Except for the gradient, the gradient is pretty cool. Um, there's paint, gradient, um, water, or blur, yeah. Um, dodge. See, I don't know. I don't know like all the, the tools just because there's so many. I don't use some very often. So like, for example, I didn't know what the, the water droplet was because I don't use it that often, but it's the blur. So it has a pretty... I don't know, it, it just works anyways. Um, so there's the pen tool, the uh, text tool, so like for writing stuff. Um, there's the, the path selection tool. Um, there's a rectangular tool for making rectangulars. I don't know why I said rectangular, it's a rectangle. <laughs> but uh, my favorite tool out of all of these is definitely the pen tool because you can do lots of cool stuff with it but uh, that's not really for uh, beginners it's something you have to you have to work on it's it's easy to know but kind of weird you have to kind of figure it out your own way um, so so that's basically setting up your canvas ready um, and a little bit of the layout there's some more things that you can go over. I can go over over here. Um, so when you begin a canvas, it's always going to be locked. So that means that you can't really um, make things transparent, which means you can't see through things. Um, so to, uh, in order to unlock it, you would need to uh, select over here, unlock, uh, or click the locky thingy. Um, and then from there, you can actually go and get rid of whatever color to make it transparent or see-through. So that's essentially what's, uh, what this black square thing does. So again, you can move your uh, thing with uh, the move tool. Um, you can select certain things and get rid of them. So with Photoshop, uh, there's different things called layers. And that basically means that you can have things on top of each other. Let's say you have your first layer and then you have your second layer um, and then you have your third layer and fourth layer and fifth layer. Let's say you want it to be red. All you have to do is just get rid of these red and then whoever's watching, whoever's watching from up here can see the red so that's kind of visually what it is yeah that's what it, the layers do um, in order to use it you go to up to layer new layer and now let's say you want this one to be green you uh, go to your paint tool be it green and then let's say you want the white one with all that stuff on it again you just um, there's little things over here called the, um, the eye drop, I don't know. I'm just going to call them the eyes. Um, but if you unselect it, it'll be the one that is under it. And then it, let's say you move this one up here and you unhide it. Then if you hide this one, then it's green. So that's basically how the layers work. Um, it's kind of neat because you can do different things. So let's say um, I have a picture of this. I take our magic tool and I only want these. Um, so let's say we'll select this. Uh, I only want these three layers to show up on my green. All I'd have to do is uh, copy it and then from there ta -da, only those three uh, showed up on top because I uh, copied and pasted it and got rid of the, the rest of whatever's in here so that's some basic things now there's some of the controls like shortcuts to make things easier which is awesome because if you know me I love shortcuts and 
uh, I won't use a program if it doesn't have <laughs> at least a, few, a couple of uh, shortcuts. So uh, first things first, I'm the realist. No, I'm not. Um, anyways, uh, if you select something and let's say you want to copy it, the um, shortcut for that is just control C, like pretty much any other program. And then once you get rid of it, and let's say you add another layer and you want whatever you copy to be on this layer, all you have to do, control V, bam, it's right there. So control V is paste and control C is copy. Now, similarly, you can do the same, I think. No, no, you can't. Oh yes, you can. Okay, so similarly, you can uh, just press control X and it'll get rid of whatever, but I don't know if that's what you want. So some different things, there's different shortcuts that do different things pretty much copy and paste is the only they're the most common uh of any shortcuts so yeah that's basically all you need to know for now um i guess saving is pretty common so if you press Control s it'll save and at first it'll show you where you want it so let's say i want it on my desktop just save it there okay it's done um but let's say you wanted to save it as a different name all you have to do is Control alt s save it as a different name so you don't have to change it you don't have to have it to be that you can just change it to whatever you want and it'll save it to whatever you want um anyways so let's say you wanted a new let's say you wanted to work on multiple things so all you have to do is just add another one another project and then ta-da, you can switch back and forth or you can have them side by side to compare, you know, different things. You can resize and now moving on, I just wanted to talk about importing photos. So let's say you got this really cool photo that you found online and you want to import it into here. So let's say, wow, we found a really cool image. Now we want it in there. All you have to do uh, is you can either click and drag it and move it here in windows i don't know this is how i normally do it but it, let's say you copy uh or you save the image as and then you go up to your desktop and you save it blah 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 whatever basically you just saved it uh now you take it and you drag it and drop it right in now um what happens is like uh let's say you get an image that's not so great quality so like um, cool or whatever. I don't know what to do. Uh, let's say you get an image. <sighs> yeah, let's say you get an image like this where it's only 215 by 185 uh, pixels. Uh, and you take it and you put it in there. When you do that, it'll just be very blurry and pixely or whatever. And it's just, it's no good. So that's because this is only uh, this is going over a certain amount of time and the re resolution is only set to be for uh, 219 or whatever yeah 215 by 185 um, so that means the smaller you make it the more clear it becomes from afar basically like when you zoom in it that's pretty crap but uh, from afar it looks pretty good um, so that's kind of a little basic tip um, What's this camera size? Uh, so let's say you want a 1920 by 1080. Uh, 1080. Um, let's just get rid of this whole thing. <laughs> and we'll start from scratch. Uh, we'll drag and drop this, which is our thing. And so right now it looks like, I mean, you can upscale some things and it won't look too bad because you won't notice it. But uh, if you upscale it like this, obviously you're going to see some, some, uh, uh, you're going to see some things wrong with it. But like, this is no big deal. So you don't have to worry about like that. I mean, I just wouldn't recommend going and doing this because, well, I mean, you could for something like this, but for any other picture, it might look bad if you try to resize it. Anyway, so let's say you got your picture in here uh, and you want to 
edit it or you want to add some sort of texture to make it look cool. So this is a, a trick that I use kind of often. You just look up a, a texture that you want, texture background, um, fabric or something, and you do HD because you want it to be the same resolution or whatever. Uh, if you're doing a lower image size, like uh, let's say you're doing 400 by 268 and this is this one would be perfect for you because it's exactly what you want but we're not doing that and it's good to be over so you yeah you can get one like this uh to add your texture on but it's kind of better if you get something over so like that's a great size for what i'm doing so i'll, I'll show you different things um so let's say you take that you put it in here size it up a bit oh and that's another thing you don't want to just click and do this because I, I if you're following along in this video I'm so sorry if I anyways uh, what you want to do is you want to hit shift and you want to drag it like that that way it doesn't ruin the proportion check it and you'll notice it's pretty good quality uh, next you want to raster size it I don't know what it does all I know is it was a problem and I figured it out and now whenever I raster size things things happen to be better and you can do more stuff so yeah so I just make it a habit to do that to every layer I'm sure it has a reason of uh, being there but for now I just really don't care I do it it works makes things makes me happy so anyways uh we'll go move on uh you can do different things to it so what's cool is uh you can actually layer it but you can uh layer it in a certain format if that makes sense so let's say you select this uh top layer we'll name it top layer and we'll name this bottom layer you select the top layer and you can actually have different things happen to it so you can dissolve it or you can darken it multiply uh, that actually looks pretty cool um, you can color burn darker color uh, screen is most typical because it just it's kind of what people want I mean that looks pretty good you can do different things about it uh, Photoshop is really a tool designed for customization and um, user preference so like if you like something like this then you keep it like that uh if you like something a little more darker that might do uh that might do if you're doing something like a comic i don't know there's different uses for different things this is just a basic tutorial uh going over what photoshop can do i'm not specifically telling you to do it anyway like i mean you can be creative in whatever way you you want to be but this is just how to do it so that's uh, that's editing photos that's like the fourth step um and next is actually very interesting next is like my way of how i create some of my artwork um so I like to draw every now and then on here, uh, but only if I have like a reference-ish. So uh, my way to draw is actually using the pen tool because like I said, it's my favorite uh, tool and it's just very cool to use. So um, let's say you wanna make like a cartoon of like a sled, yeah a sled and then uh, to make a line through that path uh, you have to stroke it so you can use a brush and you'll notice that it didn't really do much because this color has to be a different color than your background so you just click on it you change it to whatever you want okay do the same thing stroke see and then that's your sled and you can do different things with it um, you can have like a stick person riding. So I mean obviously you can get more into detail. Um, I'll show you some examples of things that I've done. Um, I've done my profile picture. This is all me. It used to be something like that. Um, I basically took this image 
and I put it behind this and also making it a little bit darker, um, which is another thing you can do. I forgot about it. Um, I'll use my actually profile picture as an example. Put this in here. Yes, it's just behind that layer. Don't worry about it. Uh, raster size it because raster sizing is awesome. And um, filter, yeah. That's, so that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, filters are actually great. Uh, filters could do a lot. Um, lens correction, let's just go over it. It's probably most common. Uh, if you go to con custom, you can do different things. You can add a vinaigrette sort of feel, make it darker, make it lighter. Um, kind of change the midpoint of where it is. Remove distortion or whatever. I don't know. You can do a whole bunch of stuff, really. Like, um, so that's giving it more of like a perspective, I guess. I don't know. So yeah, um, there's different filters. You just go over it. You do whatever you want. Liquify, uh, obviously, kind of uh, doing this. I don't know uh, if that makes it more liquid. Like, um, I don't really like it, but. If you like it, then that's fine. Um, you do blur, which is pretty cool. Um, it's kind of what I did with my uh, profile picture. If you look, it's a little bit blurrier than uh, the the crisp uh, photo from before. Um, so text, you can add like channel name or whatever. Um, This is like a whole bunch of stuff. Like if you press on this, which kind of looks like a folder, it'll give you different options for the fonts. Um, you can change uh, the size from up and down um, and also from side to side or more space, more spaced out. So let's say you want something like that. That's pretty cool, I guess. I don't know. Um, Yeah, you can do different things like that, channel name, like, I mean, having like a big C, I don't know. You just kind of got to experiment and do what you do. Um, you know, I'm all boldish, italicized, uh, capital. Actually, that doesn't look that bad. Um, yeah. So, um, I mean, you can do different things. You can actually add the text as like an overlayer. So you can make it like dissolve. You can make it um, show up like on the, the photo. Yeah, so like overlay. Oh, and I lied to you before. Overlay is actually the one instead of uh, screen. Overlay is the one that's most common, uh, commonly used. So another lie from me. I'm sorry. Anyways, um, you can underline it. Underlining isn't actually that good in Photoshop. I have to admit. So if I were doing something like underlining in Photoshop, I would actually manually do it, just because. So there we go. Nice crisp underline. I don't know. Yeah, that looks great. Perfect. 10 out of 10. Um, so, yeah, there's really different things that you can do with Photoshop. It's all up to you. It's creativity. Um, I don't know what else to say. Like, you can f do filters. Oh, yeah. Um, you can add hues so like you can change the, the different hues of uh, photos and stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, color balance, there's a whole bunch of stuff over here. Black and white, obviously. Uh, photo, photo filter, so you can make it like sepia if you wanted, or like a different color. Um, I guess not. Um, you can uh, do like a, uh, these ones, you can make it brighter or lighter, darker, I meant, sorry. Uh, you can add more contrast so that you can make it pop out a little more. Um, change the levels by moving this and giving it more of like a 
volcanic feel, I guess. I don't know. Uh, curves are actually probably one of the most used in this section uh, when it go comes to like editing like a photo. I mean, you can change it from being very dramatic to like very open at like once. I don't know. Uh, some people prefer different things. It's kind of cool and neat when you take a look and you, you uh, really get uh, into like what you want to do. See, that's kind of like a cool thing. So to end this video, I just want to um, make a little thumbnail so that you guys like it. So this is what I would do if I were uh, making like a thumbnail or something. So first of all, I'd go up and I'd check what the, the sizes are. So we'll check thumbnail um, size for YouTube images. Let's check it out. It seems to be 1280 by 720. So we'll look up, um, go to new, um, 1280 by, uh, what, sorry, 720. Great. So we got a new photo. Um, I like to add like a blue theme because that's my sort of brand. That's what my image is. And then for my update videos, I'll do like a red tinge because it contrasts really well. Um, so I don't know. Um, maybe we'll do um, something that represents like Photoshop. See if we can find any references. Oh, that looks kind of cool. So somehow we should probably incorporate the logo into it. So now we have our Photoshop um, thing. I'm just going to resize it, make it look a little bit better. There we go. That's probably good. Um, then I'm just going to select it. That's pretty bad select. There we go. Um, another cool thing is you can select the inverse of a selection. So, oh yeah, I need to rasterize it. There we go. So I just selected all the white part and got rid of it. Now I can move it around. Um, so I want it to be like a theme, uh, of blue because, well, Photoshop of course is blue and also my channel's, uh, theme, if you look up or you're probably already on is a nice uh, bluish greenish sort of feel um, except for the red for the updates because that's contrasting like I said um, so we'll do something with maybe a um, gradient so this is how I would go about doing something um, that actually looks not too bad but I, I wanted <laughs> anyways uh, let's, let's make another layer Add it to the background. Now, um, something I consider when I'm uh, making a, f a Photoshop or when I'm making a thumbnail is the simplicity. Um, I want something that attracts people. So if you were to look on um, YouTube and see this, you might be like, oh, it's just another crappy Photoshop tutorial. Well, I'm not going to click on it. So. What I do is I add some photos, I guess, um, background HD. So for example, I took for my, um, intro, if I go and look, you know, it's probably right here. I don't have to look on there cause that gives me views and I don't like doing that. Um, so my intro has this photo in it, which is kind of really cool. I really like this image. Um, and when I put my name on it, oh damn, it's just, it's so good. Anyways, um, I like to make my thumbnails very interesting because if it's not interesting, then nobody clicks on it and sad me because I don't get views and, and, uh, I'll never make my YouTube career good. But anyways, um, so what I like to do is I like to look up, um, royalty 
free images for uh, images that I use where I um, actually like need to have like I mean like if you're using a Photoshop logo of course it's a Photoshop logo it doesn't really matter where you get it from like you're just kind of I guess promoting them so it doesn't really matter if you use any photo of the logo I mean as long as it's updated I don't think they really care I don't really know the rules or like the laws behind it but I'm pretty sure like you can't just go on Google and do something and then put it on my YouTube channel and be like hey that's my own work I mean it is because I edited it but like um, I like to use royalty free images because um, they're just you have the right to use them I think pretty sure I hope I'm god I hope <laughs> anyways um, so what I like to do is I have like this nature theme going on um, so oh hey that's really cool I do something like that so I really only really need like this size but I'll just uh, go ahead and make the resolution even better so now I've got my water photo in here looks kind of dope um, so now we need like a, a text so we'll go ahead and say um, basic can't spell uh, Photoshop oh my god basic Photoshop um, for beginners I forget what I named this basic Photoshop skills for beginners there we go so when editing uh, text sometimes it'll be weird like this uh, you just have to kind of select a layer or a row and go up here this is your tool that moves it up and down so something like that but I like where Photoshop basic Photoshop is so maybe I'll just make these two separate so we'll copy and paste that get rid of it uh, click the check mark up here and then copy and paste it okay there we go so another thing to look for when you're creating a thumbnail is color and like things that kind of pop out so um, I would make that bigger because that's Photoshop and that's what I'm doing I also kind of want to make it like a different color because something that photo follows my theme Actually, why don't we just use that straight up? There we go. Basic Photoshop. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this because I want to add a certain thing to this because I think that might look cool.
that's another cool thing you can do is you can actually add like different things to the text so you can bevel it um contour i don't know what texture different things um you can add a stroke which is kind of cool uh an inner shadow inner glow see it in so this is kind of what everything looks like color overlay uh, gradient which is kind of like the other thing pattern overlay this is something i've been doing for a lot of my videos um outer grow and a drop shadow and that's also another thing that I've been doing for my videos just to make things pop out more um, and the cool thing is that you can't you can also do a lot of this stuff with photos too so you don't you can't so you can do it with photos as well as uh, text so that's cool I might go ahead and make stroke just because it's kind of hard to see Um, something that contrasts so that looks pretty nice um, I might go ahead and make Photoshop have a white one or a gray one I should say um, we'll have this be like the uh, the normal text so we'll have it um, having like a black and then this is uh, same thing but we want it to have uh, that sort of pattern overlay uh, wait no sorry I was thinking about the Photoshop one when I was, said that There we go, so that looks kind of cool and neat. And that could be like our thumbnail. Maybe we should make it a little bit better. Why don't we? looks kind of neat because it kind of cancels out whatever's behind it. So that's what uh, my thumbnail looks like. Um, in order to take it out of Photoshop, you need to go up here, save as, change it to a PNG, or you can change it to a JPEG, whatever you prefer. I do PNG because it's simpler and you can actually do transparent things with it. So then you change it, you name it whatever you want um, for your thumbnail. I already saved it, but anyways, um, it'll save it and then you can just save it again as that. Get rid of that because we don't need it anymore. 
and then ta-da you have a thumbnail for YouTube so that's sort of some things I picked up in Photoshop that help me make thumbnails and help me make it look good um, like I said I have like this blue theme going on so hopefully that is cool um, I hope you like this tutorial kind of gives you some basic knowledge of Photoshop what it can do and um, if I have any advice for you guys it's just to take a look at some YouTube videos find out some tutorials in Photoshop that um, relate to what you want to do with it so let's say you're making a Minecraft um, a channel and you want to make like a profile picture or something like that go look up how to make a profile picture I can actually I've actually uh, I've made a, a video like that and um, uh, if you want to do edits to that photo uh, Photoshop is a great tool for that so you can look up different different things you can do with Photoshop um, this is a less specific video but there are more specific tasks you can do with Photoshop um, yeah, uh, I mean, just like be creative with what you want to do. I mean, I had no idea I was doing a thumbnail at the beginning of this video, but I kind of came up with it half way through. Um, but I hope you like this video. It's kind of something I picked up from Photoshop and I, um, and I wanted to do like a, a video like this every Thursday-ish because I want to be able to do a video on Thursday and a video on Monday. So I'm thinking uh, commentaries on Monday definitely and then uh, Thursdays can either be like a video on game gameplay footage or it can be a video on uh, Photoshop or something like that. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you learned something, then leave a like, subscribe, um, comment what you learned. Um, tell me about it. Uh, I definitely want to hear from you guys. I think that's all I have to say. So I guess Palioxys out.